Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 149, featuring a long overdue retrospective of Diablo. Blizzard's 1997 masterpiece that just received its third installment just a few weeks ago. So I thought this was great timing for this, so without further ado, here is Diablo. Yes, folks, here we are with the original Diablo. A little something to play if you can't log into the third one. This game came out in December 31st, 1996, just missing that critical Christmas window. But uh, true to Blizzard's reputation, that didn't seem to affect the cells very much. They didn't need that boost after all. Mmm, yummy eyeballs. Very nutritious, high-protein food there. I'd actually forgotten how dark and gritty and violent uh, this thing is. There are scenes in this that would give Rob Zombie a run for his money. Now just to uh, give you a, a little background, this is 1996, might as well call it 97. Uh, some of the games that were out at this time, Daggerfall, which I reviewed, uh, that came out in 96. Now if this game's a little too violent, you could have tried a Super Mario RPG. Uh, by the way guys, you will need a full 8 megabytes to run this game. <laughs> like Direct DirectX 3.1. I mean, they're, uh, they spell all this out. The wonderfully illustrated manual, and by the way, if you haven't read the manual for this, you should. There's lots of background story, and there's uh, descriptions of the monsters and everything. It's uh, well worth picking up. A lot of great artwork in that. I actually think this intro movie, and really the whole game, has a vibe of Army of Darkness, Evil Dead kind of feel. This guy getting beat up here sure could use a chainsaw and a shotgun right about now. Groovy. Now, obviously, one thing that made this game uh, so in incredibly successful is that they uh, they made it for a, a broad mass audience. They just took the bare essentials of the CRPG genre, stripped out everything else. Reduced it to utter simplicity. I mean, basically the only choice you make here at the beginning is <laughs> uh, which template do you want to use. Uh, they got the stats uh, set up there for you. And this is a far cry from uh, even Daggerfall that I mentioned earlier. Uh, games that kind of expected you to be familiar and have a background in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, tabletop, uh, AD&D, that kind of stuff. And uh, what they lack for in complexity, they'll make up for in intensity, as you'll see. Now, coming up here is one of my favorite scores. Now, this piece of music uh, was composed by Matt Uhlman, and apparently that's him actually playing a 12-string guitar and flute. You go on to make some music for other Blizzard games, including StarCraft, Diablo 2, Burning Crusade, and he's even done the music for Torchlight, so the guy gets around, does, does great work. All right, so let's see what kind of mischief we can get up to here in Tristram. There's a likely suspect over there, Farnham the Drunk. Kind of fellow drinking geese? Damn that eternal conflict. I just want to get hammered. No one ever listen, <laughs> listens to me. Somewhere, I ain't too sure, but somewhere out of the church, the whole pile of gold gleam, shine, just waiting for someone to get it. There is, by the way, a Diablo Ale. It's put out by the Steamworks Brewery in Colorado. I haven't tried it yet, but I will assume any beer with a big devil on the front can't be all bad. Let's continue on to the International Plaza. Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. I love how they just call it Gossip. Griswold, a man of great action and great courage. I bet he never told you about the time he went into the labyrinth to save Wirt, did he? He knows his fair share I'm guessing of you guys who played this back in high school probably had a notebook again, where you wrote so all your you, O's, just he like is that. a skilled craftsman, and if he claims to be able to help you in any way, you can count on his honesty and his skill. That's basically all Diablo is, really. You just go from town person to town person chatting, gossiping. No actual combat. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, sometimes I think that Kane talks too much. Wait a I minute. I thought only dwarves were blacksmiths and had Scottish accents. Steel as well as he can bend your ear. Oh, I could make a suit of court plate good enough for an emperor. You stupid giant dwarf. I don't need court plates. 
Please give me an orange dress, preferably with a floral print. Come on, there's got to be somebody I can whack with my stick here. What ails you, my friend? I haven't killed anything! I have made a very interesting discovery. I don't care. I'm out of here. Let's go to the dungeon. Please, listen to me. The Archbishop Lazarus. He led us down here to find the lost prince. The bastard led us into a trap. Now everyone is dead. Killed by a demon he called the Butcher. Why does it always have to be the butcher? So find the bad this guys, you know? and Why can't it be the so baker? The megalomaniacal rest. candlestick maker. Now some of you might have noticed that my sorcerer has become a warrior. That's what they call magic. The sanctity of this place has been fouled. Yeah, sorry about that. Probably shouldn't have had those cheese curds. Alright, so here is the famous Diablo battle action combat, uh, whatever you want to call it, you are clicking on the enemies one by one, one swing per click. You better hope you have a good mouse because you're going to be clicking that button about 10 million times before you're done with this. You also have to click where you want him to go to. There's no movement with the keyboard here. It's all mouse driven. And the manual, by the way, had to explain to people what the difference was between a left click and a right click. They've got a handy diagram for those who are new to thought. You'll notice too that I have a, the auto mapper on. Now that's what's overlaid over the uh, gameplay screen there. I actually consider that to be one of the most interesting innovations of Diablo. I mean, on the one hand, it, uh, it's great because it doesn't occupy a big chunk of the interface. Uh, you don't have to keep clicking to a separate map screen. You know, you can see this at the same time. Uh, the only downside is it does tend to obscure the dungeon graphics, but, you know, you can turn it on and off just by hitting tab. You can also scroll it around using the arrow keys. So I have to say I, I like it. It takes a little getting used to, but once you do, it, it feels very natural. Another big thing about Diablo is that the dungeons are procedurally generated or randomized, so if you create a new character, the dungeons will be different. And this, of course, is great for replay value. It's, it's also the reason that some people refer to this game as a roguelike or inspired by rogue. You can go back and look at my rogue video if you're not familiar with that. I think the developers did a really good job with the algorithms. I mean, this some of the dungeons I played in this game were better than some in games where the uh, they actually had level designers go in and, and hand, hand place everything. So definitely need to be commended on that. Probably the other famous thing about this game is the loot system. So it's sort of like a slot machine style in that there's, you never really know, I could just open one of these barrels and a, a super rare, unique item could pop out of it. That's always nice. Uh, the items are tiered. You've got the common items and then the blue items, which are has some kind of special ability on them, and then uh, unique items. And you can find wikis and stuff online where people have... Uh, categorize all these unique items. But it's, it's always a, a kind of a thrill. Keeps you clicking that one extra time in hopes that you might get that really awesome weapon. Of course, it also means you could spend a lot of the game without a decent piece of gear. You can't go pop up to the blacksmith and try to buy one, but that's also randomized. So Again, kind of roguelike, and you know, you know, if you never really know what you're going to end up with, Ultimately, my goal here is to get down to level 16 and kill the big baddie down there. It's got a great uh, twist ending, or surprise ending. I definitely won't be spoiling for you here, but I think it's uh, well worth seeing at least once. All right, there I've leveled up, so I can click this, and you can see that the only decisions I have to make are how to distribute these five points. Uh, for warriors, the strength gives you more melee damage. Dexterity helps you to hit the monsters and uh, dodge or block with your shield. Vitality affects your health. And magic is not useless for the warrior. Uh, just because you're a warrior doesn't mean you can't cast spells in Diablo. I could if I wanted to put a lot of points in there and learn how to cast some cool spells. So, pretty nice system. See, I've already taken some damage there. Uh, the items in Diablo take damage. They have durability scores. If you uh, don't repair them occasionally, they'll disintegrate completely. The warrior has a repair skill thing, but 
It's not the best because every time you use it, you lose a little bit of the maximum durability on your items. So it doesn't really matter with this uh, cheap gear that you get at the start of the game, but later on when you start to get some really nice weapons, you're going to want to go back to the town and use the blacksmith. It'll do, bring it back to new. So It's another little aspect of the game you either love or hate, I suppose. These uh, first couple uh, levels are, of course, relatively easy. But you still have to be careful not to get surrounded by enemies. Uh, they have zones, basically, where if you drift into them or they, you get close enough to them or they see you, they'll start advancing. So you want to just advance slowly and carefully and try not to attract or aggro uh, too many monsters at once. One of my favorite tricks is to stand in the doorway, just inside the doorway, and that keeps them coming in one at a time. That's pretty much a survival skill later in the game. Another problem with this interface is that you can't turn it around, you can't rotate it, uh, and sometimes items can be hidden, you know, depending on uh, where it is, if it's obscured behind a wall. It's another reason why you want to make sure you have the sound on, because you can hear the different kinds of items dropping. Like a book makes a different sound uh, than gold, for example, or a weapon. So it's kind of interesting uh, use of uh, game audio there, I think. It's not just uh, for decoration, actually part of the gameplay, important part of the interface. Another interesting design decision was the save game system. So instead of allowing you to have multiple saves, you can only have one save uh, for each of your characters. And it is uh, very possible to save it in a bad place and be stuck and have to re restart a new character. So put a little thought into where you save. Make sure you got a way out or a town portal uh, scroll. Now one funny thing about these barrels is some of them explode. So you'd think it would make sense to try to attack them at range. Unfortunately, even if you use a bow, you have to get right up next to it to, ex <laughs> to destroy it. Oh, Blizzard. All right, so I think I found the Butcher. Fresh meat. He's in gold, so that means he's a unique monster. And look at how fast he's taking me down. I mean, what am I, chop liver? Come on. This guy's not messing around. Unfortunately, when I played my sorcerer, I, I never got any mana mana bottles, but as soon as I switched to warrior, that's about all I got. <laughs> no heals. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm dead. So I'll have to reload and uh, try this guy, guy again. I went to the S-Mart back in Tristram and got some health potions. Got the whole belt loaded up with them. This is a little piece of friendly advice here. If you're playing this, around other people, you might want to lower the volume or put on some headphones during these battles because they might just hear it and get the wrong idea about what you're up to. Going through these pots one after the other, he's already damaged my breastplate there. I'll probably have to go back up and get some more gear after this. Must be a hell of an apron he's got there. Oh, there goes that piece of armor. It's like the helmet's next. Something else I've noticed is the harder you hit your mouse button, the more damage you do. So you really want to slam that sucker. Just make sure you're using your friend's mouse, not your own. All right, guys, I'm going to go have a sandwich. I'll be back in about an hour. Yeah, he's taken out all my armor except for my shield. Just about out of potions. Blizzard, if you don't let me kill the butcher, I'm canceling my WoW subscription. The spirits of the dead are now avenged. See, I swear they, they can hear you, you know? All right, look at that awesome, awesome Max. Oh, the cleaver. <laughs> Not to be confused with the beaver cleaver. Get that thing up there. Let's take a look inside this guy's office and see if we can find out why they call him the butcher. You know, it looks more like acupuncture to me. This guy's look so relaxed. All right, here we are in the Skeleton King's Lair. I went ahead to the second quest. This is uh, a little further along. I'm getting hit by archers now. They're really irritating because they run from you, try to get distance, and you have to chase after them. And the movement is a little herky-jerky, a little zigzag thing. The big skeleton guy back there is obviously the king in question. So I'm going to try to do my little door trick here and see if I can take him on. Mano y mano. First, I have to take care of his little henchmen. All right, here we go, Skeleton King. 
Most times like this when having a giant axe just comes in so handy, you know? And if I can cleave this guy, it doesn't look like he's nearly as tough for me as the butcher was. What makes this so intense is you really have to watch that health and pop the pot at just the right moment. Actually quite intense. Rest well, Leoric. I'll find your son. I actually haven't gotten the quest to kill this guy yet, but it doesn't matter. I could still get it and get credit for it, so it's pretty cool. I gotta pawn some of this stuff. Ah, inventory management. Always one of my favorite aspects of CRPGs. Why do developers think this would be fun? I, I don't I don't get it. All right, now this undead crown is great. Look at the power. Life stealing. I mean, that is a huge thing for me in this game because I, that's going to greatly reduce the trips back to town to get the health potions and healing and everything. So quite, quite happy about that. Too much baggage. I need a donkey. So there's a lot later in the game, down to level nine. Still quite a, quite a ways to go to get all the way down to level 16, but... Thought I'd show you some of the different uh, textures you can look forward to. Of course, the monsters also get tougher. These guys will try to get a run up to you, and if you let them connect, they'll do a heck of a lot of damage. So you want to try to close as quickly as possible. One thing I think they do really well in this game too is building up the ratcheting up the tension as you go deeper and deeper in this dungeon. Uh, the look of the levels changes. You encounter uh, more horrific-looking monsters. Even though the music changes, you know, it's more and more sinister sounding. I think by the end of it, you're listening to Elton John. I mean, this is uh, scary stuff. Even though the gameplay is really simple. I mean, you're basically just clicking the mouse. Somehow it works. There's just something uh, that I have never really been able to put my finger on that makes this game, makes you want to continue playing even when you realize just how fiendishly simple it is. Of course, this game's also known for its multiplayer. It's, this was the game that introduced Battle.net. So what was unique about that was, once you bought the game, you could use that for free. Unheard of at the time, but it worked out really well for Blizzard in the end. Probably helped make them the household name they are today. So, there you go. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with the 150th episode of Matt Chat. It's a special occasion. I've decided to uh, celebrate it with Shane R. Monroe. He's the uh, host of Retro Gaming Radio and the, the guy that inspired me to start doing podcasts and videos in the first place. So he's a really great guy, a good friend of mine. It's a real pleasure to have him on. So definitely want to stay tuned for that. And don't forget, I'll have a special thank you lined up for all of the people who have uh, supported the show. So if you haven't done that, go to armchairrk.com. There's still time if you act uh, quickly, and you can be part of the 150th special episode. So thank you, uh, one and all, everyone who has supported the show. Uh, there definitely wouldn't be 150 of these Matt Chats without your help. So thank you very much. Also has some really uh, good news for uh, fans of the show. I just signed a contract with Taylor and Francis to publish Matt Chat the book. Uh, we're calling it uh, right now Honoring the Code, Conversations with Great Game Designers. And it's based around the interviews we've, I've conducted um, over, the, uh, over the years here on the show. So I'll uh, try to keep you posted as I learn more about that. There's the small problem actually writing the book, which <laughs> I need to get started on. Uh, but anyway, I thought you guys would like to know about that. Oh, now what about that Ale of the Week? Uh, my, uh, one of my supporters, really good, good friend, actually, uh, Herbert, has sent me a box of ales to sample. And the, the first one, I just picked one at random uh, from the box. They all look uh, fantastic, can't wait. Uh, this one, though, is called Telegraph. It is uh, brewed in Santa Barbara, California. It's a white ale. It's unfiltered, and it's apparently uh, brewed with spices and chamomile. I, I like, actually like chamomile tea, so I'm you know, kind of curious what this is going to taste like. I never <laughs> imagined mixing it with ale. Uh, but you know what the hell, maybe it'll be great. So anyway, let's get this open and uh, see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Telegraph here in the horn, and uh, you know, I made the mistake of pouring it too quickly, so I had to wait a, quite a while for that uh, head to die down. So my advice is if you want to sample this, pour it very, very slowly and with great caution. Otherwise, you'll be waiting forever to enjoy your ale, and we wouldn't want that. All right, here's my toast to Mr. Herbert. Thank you very, very much for the ale, and I hope you enjoy your books as much as I enjoy this. <laughs> kind of doubtful, but you never know.
Anyway, let's give it a, a smell. Very mildly uh, scented, very uh, understated uh, scent. Um, you can definitely tell it's a, it's a Belgian white ale. You get the, sort of the flowers and the peaches and the ape, fruity kind of uh, flavor that you get with these. Uh, let's give it a, a taste. Ooh. Very mild uh, flavor too. It's, you can, let's see, what am I tasting there? Uh, it's a real mild peach, apricot, you know, sort of what the, tastes like what it smells like, I guess you could say. I can sort of detect a little bit of the chamomile, though it's very uh, understated. Kind of in the aftertaste, you can detect just a trace, just a hint of uh, chamomile. It's definitely uh, not a, a strong component of this taste. Actually quite nice, uh, extremely drinkable. Uh, I don't really taste any alcohol or hoppiness or bitterness at all with this. Uh, very, very mild uh, flavored ale. Um, I do have, I'm starting to feel the alcohol a little bit here, so I think it has something in it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks again, Herbert. Um, that's uh, very kind of you to send me those, and I really appreciate it. So the quotation is from Albert Einstein. I found it in this book called uh, When All Hell Breaks Loose. Uh, written by uh, Cody Lundeen. Uh, he does a show called Dual Wild on uh, this Discovery Channel. But anyway, I just saw this quotation. I thought this would be perfect for Diablo. And it goes something like this. Any intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. See you guys next week.